Hey there gang and welcome to this tutorial series where I'm going to show you how to use Riverpod for state management in Flutter. Okay then, so I recently released a Flutter Masterclass course and in that course we did a bit of global state management and to do that we used a package called Provider. But there's also other packages for state management in Flutter as well and one of those is called Riverpod. Now Riverpod is basically just a rebuild of the provider package with a view to improving the library. And in fact, the name itself is just an anagram of provider. So in this series, we're gonna learn all about how to manage a state using Riverpod. But first of all, why do we need a state management solution in Flutter anyway? Well, imagine we make an application with many different screens and widgets, and some of those widgets might need access to the same state, like some product states. For example, this widget, the home screen, and also this widget, the mini car, might both need the same product state. Well, in that case, we'd most likely define or fetch our data in the home screen widget, the widget highest up in the tree that needs the data or state. And then we'd pass that down the widget tree until it reaches the mini cart widget where it's also needed. And this is fine, but there's a lot of drilling through these other widgets to pass this bit of state down. Now, also imagine that we need to edit this product state from the mini cart. How would we achieve that? Well, since the state is defined in the home screen widget, we need to make a function within that widget to update it. And then we'd have to pass that function all the way down to the mini cart widget as well, so we can invoke it from there. Then when we do that, the widget tree gets rebuilt to reflect that state change. So this is just a relatively simple and probably quite common scenario, but it's also likely you'll reach for this pattern in multiple places within an application, where we're defining state high up and then passing it down through the widgets to other places it's needed. And the same for functions to update the state too. And when this pattern becomes more common in your application, it can lead to code that gets a little bit messy and harder to maintain. So this is where a state management solution can simplify things for us. So let's now imagine we're using some generic state management tool. The general premise would probably be like this. We make a central data store or provider as they're typically known, which defines or somehow fetches the initial state for the application. Then we can provide that state directly to whatever widgets need it. And we don't therefore need to drill down the widget tree and pass the data through it where we need it. We're just consuming the state directly from the central provider. And the same would be true for updating the state. We just reach into that provider directly and use a method defined there to update the state. When that happens, the provider can also notify whatever widgets consume the state, which can then rebuild to reflect that change. So this general pattern makes things much more simple and manageable. Now to achieve this, we're gonna be using the Riverpod package for Flutter that lets us make these providers and allows widgets to consume them. But like I said, this general pattern of making providers and consumers is not just unique to Riverpod. Other packages also have similar patterns. So in this series then, we'll be using the Riverpod package to manage the state of a simple shopping cart application. And that shopping cart state gets used in a couple of different widgets. It gets used up here on the home page to show how many items are in the cart. And it also gets used on the cart page, which we can get to if we click on this icon. And we can see here all the items in the cart and the total price as well. And both of these widgets consume the state from the same provider. So then during this series, we'll be looking at a variety of providers and different ways to create them, including using the Riverpod generator package to generate the provider code for us. We'll also see how to consume provider state within stateless and stateful widgets so that we can output it through the screen. And by the way, I do expect that coming into this series, you already have a basic understanding of Flutter in general. If you don't, then definitely check out my Flutter masterclass, first of all, the link to that is going to be down below the video, or you can check out my smaller Flutter crash course on YouTube. Now, for this course, I've made course files for every single lesson, and you can find them all on this GitHub repo right here. Every lesson has its own branch, so if you want to see or download the code for a specific lesson, just select that lesson from the branch drop down first, then you can go to the code button, press it, and download a zip folder of that lesson. There's also a branch for a starter project as well that we'll be using, and that branch is called Starts Project. 
So we'll be downloading that in the next lesson and setting up our project with the Riverpod package. By the way, if you want to take your whole Flutter skills to the next level, then definitely check out this Flutter Masterclass course I created and released just a short while ago on the NetNinja Pro website. I will leave this link down below. It's just $10 to buy and it includes a shared load of content. So we go through all the basics of Flutter, but then we look at layout, theming, UI, data models, user import, routing and screens. We look at the provider package, which is an alternative to Riverpod, what you're watching here, and using global state with provider. We look at adding a database, Firestore, and then we add animations to the project as well. On top of that, there's a couple of bonus chapters. We look at forms in Flutter. We have a dark crash course attached to this. And also I will be putting this whole Riverpod course as a bonus chapter at the end of this as well. So you can watch all of this course without adverts during this masterclass as well. So there's loads and loads of content in this course. Like I said, just $10 to buy. So I will leave this link down below as well. And by the way, if you want to sign up for a monthly membership, you can do. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro. You get access to all of my courses, all of my masterclass courses for just $9 a month. And the first month is half price when you use this promo code right here, Ninja Fledgling. So I'll also leave the link to this page down below as well.